Amen to that. Wow. Put a lot of soul into that. Thank you. And we praise God today for gathering us to worship and especially to remember the story of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem and the whole journey uh, through Holy Week and then uh, next Sunday into uh, the experience of the resurrection for us. And so today we are continuing with the theme of seeking, asking questions uh, to seek a deeper uh, faith. And, and the, the promise that part of the journey is being open and honest about our struggles, uh, the things we cannot understand or the things we will probably never understand on this side of eternity. But today the question is, where are you headed? And so thinking of Jesus and the journey into Jerusalem, the questions we've been asking through this sermon series have been leading us to this question. So if you remember the first Sunday we asked, who will you listen to? This was part of the experience of Jesus in the wilderness and the temptation uh, facing the one that was telling him, oh, it's all about power, it's all about uh, esteem, it's all about security, having bread, having uh, people worship him, even if it came from the tempter. And so this was the question did Jesus listen to the voice of God or listen to the voice of the tempter? And the same is for us today, the question. And then the second question was, how do we begin again? So thinking of Abraham and Sarah and thinking of Nicodemus being invited to trust in the power of the Holy Spirit to help them to be reborn of the Spirit. 
And then, will you, will you give me a drink? And this was about the experience of Jesus at the well with the Samaritan woman and Jesus showing vulnerability by asking uh, the woman to give him something to drink, knowing that she wouldn't have been an appropriate person to ask because of being a Samaritan, being a woman. Uh, he would have been seen as someone who would be above her. But then he put himself out there to cross those barriers that we uh, put between us and others. And then the question of who sinned, and this was uh, based on the story from John 9, where uh, Jesus uh, was asked by his disciples about a man born blind. You know, did he sin or did his, uh, did his parents? And Jesus redirecting the people from blame, the tendency when we want to blame someone to really moving into that space of doing the work of compassion. And then the next question was, can these bones live? And this is based on the vision of uh, the prophet Ezekiel of the Valley of Dry Bones, looking at all the hope uh, in times of hopelessness, in times of despair, and the story of Jesus resurrecting Lazarus. And so today, the question is about where are you headed? and thinking of Jerusalem and Palm Sunday and this whole experience. And so the question before us is about trusting, walking in life, trusting our companion uh, that is the power of the Spirit. Most of us would like to have a plan for life and follow the plan, but we know in real life, does the plan always turn out like we imagined it? No, and the older we get, the more we realize how absurd that whole concept is, yet we still try. And what we can rely on is the one who guides us, and, and especially in times of fear and certain uncertainties. And so today, one of the things that you will uh, hear, as we always do, where we sing about Hosanna and the word Hosanna, and I have a short video from Amy Jill Levine, who is a biblical scholar, and she is Jewish herself, uh, which makes for a lot of interesting points that she uh, sees and insights, in, especially in the New Testament. When Jesus enters Jerusalem, we hear the cry, Hosanna, from the Hebrew root for to save, the same root as Joshua or Hosea, or in Aramaic, Yeshu, or as we would say, Jesus. Save now, please. But we need to ask the next question, save from what? At Passover time, sometime in the early 30s of the Common Era, save us from Roman domination, from Roman taxation, from Roman oppression, from the Romans trampling our holy city and our holy temple. Or are we thinking, save us now from disease, from poverty, from despair, from sin? From what are we calling out? Save us, please. And how do we think the son of David, this man entering into Jerusalem, what sort of salvation does he bring? And so I invite us to take a deep breath and prepare our hearts for worship as we join together in the call to worship. Where is he going? Can anything good come from Nazareth? Is he headed to Jerusalem? Do you think Jerusalem is safe? Does he know that is here? Where is he going? Does he know the city is dangerous? Does he see the Pharisees watching? Could this be the Messiah? Where is he going? The crowds are singing Hosanna. Is this the beginning of the end? Should we watch? Stay awake. Where is he going? Where is he going? 
Where is he going? Where is he going? Hosanna. Amen. And please stand as you are able and join me in singing hymn number 89, Hosanna, loud Hosanna. For our gratitude today, we have uh, three items. One is the eco palms that you are uh, receiving today. Uh, thank you, Grace, uh, for uh, handing them out. But if you didn't receive one, we hope that you'll take one home. And especially to remind you of uh, the entry into Jerusalem and this week. But also, if you'd like more, there are plenty of uh, palms to take and share with people in your life who may not be able to go to church. This past week, I was able to take a few of these to a couple in, uh, from our church, and the husband is under hospice care, and he told me that he, I didn't realize why they wanted them, but he had had a tradition of making crosses out of the fronds, and this is going to be his last year with the family, so he wanted to teach the family how to make them. So I thought that was a, a good uh, connection to the life of the church, the life of Christ, but uh, we invite you to do this. And you may be wondering, what is Eco Palms? Uh, this is basically a program through the Presbyterian Church to harvest the palms in sustainable ways and also to benefit and pay fairly the people who harvest them, especially in Central America. The second one is that if you missed it, today was birthday month for March birthdays, and there was cake. I'm not sure. Is there still any cake left? Oh, there are a few pieces, so on your way out, you may partake. Somebody told me, oh, it's not my birthday. I said, well, that does not stop us from eating cake. <laughs> Usually we eat cake for any uh, for any reason. So anyway, if we celebrate you. If Mar Whose birthday was in March? 
Me, I know, I know. I went my birth. Okay, Grace. Anybody else is at a Gordon? Yeah, today, okay. You can take him a piece of cake. And so uh, we give thanks that Emily Carlson and Kathy Dispenza, uh, they are hosting this for us monthly. And so we invite you to come uh, next month. I cannot remember the date, but it will be, I'm sure it will be in the newsletter. Uh, come a little early and enjoy cake and celebrate, even if it's not your birthday. And this week we have... Holy Week uh, services. We have two services. One is Monday, Thursday at 7 p.m. And we're joining with the Baptist Church next door for uh, Tenebrae service at 7.30. And they're inviting other churches from the community to be part of it. So we give thanks for the partnership, but also for remembering the story of Jesus uh, going into Jerusalem, the Last Supper, and also the crucifixion. And so we give thanks. We invite you at this time to share any prayers of joy or concern that you may have. If you'd like to share something, please raise your hand and I'll bring a microphone to you. Yes. I actually have two. One, um, prayers for safe travels for anybody who is traveling this week and next. We, we leave either Wednesday night or Thursday morning mm -hmm. um, to go down to Christina's. But... We also have a friend, his name is Joey. Um, his dad is in the hospital with brain bleeds. Mm. Um, they don't know exactly what's going on. But Joey needs prayers too, not just his dad, but because he's having a really hard time with this. And, but they think that the brain bleeds might be cancer. And we pray for, uh, Paul, do you wanna give us an update on your dad? All right. Okay. And Jeff Stevens is continuing to recover, but he's got some back pain issues. So continue to hold him in prayer. This is going to be hard for me, but I'm going to try. <clears throat> My niece, her name is Janetta, is 55. And actually, she's the daughter of my brother who died last May. She is undergoing all kinds of treatments, but for right now, she has can't, um, treatment on her brain for brain cancer. She has cancer in her lung, her liver, and her kidney. So she needs all of our, all of our prayers. Thank you. So prayers for Janetta. Anybody else? Mark, we're grateful that you are here with us. Yes, it is wonderful joy. And uh, also yesterday for the joy of children and uh, the Easter egg hunt, there was a lot of joy in, uh, and uh, since this is kind of seems to be the way our, the life of the church is going. Um, yesterday, we also had a strings competition here for the Genesee Symphony Orchestra, and you should have seen the terrified looks on the people's faces who were coming for the competition when they saw all the cars, and they're like, oh, wow, big competition. And then we said, no, no, there's an Easter egg hunt. So praise be to God for the different community activities that happen, and uh, the joy of people working together and making it possible to use this space. And so well, let us continue in prayer. 
God, we give you thanks for the gift of your love in our lives, especially today for the journey into Jerusalem and the call to follow you and to know that you walk with us this path of life, especially when life is difficult. Help us to trust. Help us to uh, lean on you, to let you hold our hands, to bring our burdens to you. God, help us to know that also the our suffering is not strange to you or unfamiliar. Through Jesus, we know that you walked this experience of being human, of suffering, of living in the midst of uncertainty. And so we pray today that you may save us from that experience of feeling alone, that the illusion that we can just carry it all on our own. Help us, and we pray today, especially for those places where there's great strife and pain, whether it's through illness or war or tragedy. We pray for all these to be engulfed with your love and for us to be agents of that love in whatever small or big way that we can. And now we come before you for our own prayers in silence. And we continue in prayer using the words our Lord Jesus Christ taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Amen. And so thinking of our burdens and needing to be saved today and asking this question, where are you headed? I thought of uh, this poem by Robert Lee Frost. It's called The Armful. And so listen to it and think of this imagery of burdens, of trying to carry so much in life. Every, for every parcel I stoop down to seize, I lose some other off my arms and knees. And the whole pile is slipping, bottles, buns, extremes, too hard to comprehend at once. Yet nothing I should care to leave behind with all I have to hold with hand and mind. And heart, if need be, I will do my best to keep their building balanced at my breast. I crouch down to prevent them as they fall, then sit down in the middle of them all. I had to drop the armful in the road and try to stack them in a better load. And so this is the imagery, is trying to carry so much. Have you ever had that experience? Yeah? How does it usually end? Not a good thing. Either you drop something or you fall. Sometimes, you know, you miss the steps because you're carrying so much you can't even see your feet. And that's a, a big no-no. But why do we do this? Why do you think we try to carry so much in life? Save time. Save time. Okay. What, else, what other reasons? So that from a practical point of view, even, you know, you're like, okay, I don't want to make two trips. I'll make one trip. And so you're trying to carry. What else? It's hard to accept help. So you want to carry all the stuff by yourself. You know, sometimes you're dying and somebody comes and says, oh, could I help you? Oh, no, I'm fine. And it's because it's hard to ask for help. What else? Why do you think? Can't let go of every, you know, anything. Can't let go of anything. So the priorities are all like everything seems to be important. So what do I let go of? There's so much that works against us sometimes. It feels like life could become so overwhelming. We try. It's like, you know, I want to do all these things. But um, in, in life, it is important to stop. I like the image in the poem where he had to finally sit on the ground in the middle of all the piles, let them go, and then reorganize them. Uh, and, and to really sometimes pause and take that opportunity to slow down, to say, God, where do you want me? Where do you want me to go? What do you want me to do? What is important at this point? And so for us today, we're looking at the story of Jesus entering into Jerusalem as an alternative way of thinking about our parcels and, and piles and burdens. And so this was a turning point for Jesus. He was getting into uh, this. He's, he'd been wandering and teaching for about three years. And this was the point where he was going to go into Jerusalem and confront the powers and try to really amplify his message so people would really get the point about his vision for the kingdom of God. So it was a continuation, of course, of what he had been doing all along, reminding people to love their enemies, to reach beyond the barriers, to, to not be violent, to not be b blaming others, to do all these things that work for the purpose of love, and especially to trust in God. One of the biggest hurdles we have in life is our sense of trust. When, you know, you say, oh, yeah, I trust you. I trust you, Lord. But then when, when the temptations come or the, the troubles come, we hold on and we have a hard time letting go. And the imagery today is that Jesus was going into Jerusalem. There is this uh, parade that is described in the Gospels. But today we're focusing on the story from the Gospel of Matthew. And it's a makeshift parade. It is not a big parade in the sense of being organized and uh, having the army displayed like it would have been on the other side of town where the ruler from the, from Roman, from the Roman government would have displayed his power. Pilate uh, would have gone in and imagined what would, what would be a military kind of parade. What would it involve at that time? 
Some of you might have watched these old movies where they have all the Romans and the guards and the, all that they're carrying, their swords, their heavy uh, stuff to show power or to have the experience of uh, horses marching into town, showing who is boss. In contrast, we have a humble parade here. And that's intentional on the part of Jesus. Uh, he sent out to get a donkey. He wanted to make sure that the people didn't miss this, the symbolism because they were hoping for a military leader. That's what they knew. They thought, okay, the only way for salvation was to have uh, an uprising of the people and have some violent resistance. And that's what we tend to do as human beings. We want these uh, measures that, that seem to be what would work in life. But Jesus was showing an alternative, but also showing what really works. Because those, those parades, you know, today we have Putin and uh, other major players in the world who are, you know, looking at how we can, uh, we can find peace through, through force. But in 20 years from now, it'll be different people. But it'll be the same game. Think about it throughout history. It's been the same game over and over again. People fighting and thinking, okay, if we could just dominate the other, then we'll find peace. That was the philosophy of Rome. They, uh, the Roman Empire was built not to destroy people. They thought they were civilizing people and they were bringing peace. That was their big promise, but they brought it through force. Through, through power. And Jesus was offering an alternative to show what really works, what changes people's hearts, is when we stop, when we pause, when we trust, when we walk hand in hand with the, with the lead of the Spirit. And so uh, it's, a, it's a path I call, the mystics and the teachers of faith talk about it as a path of descent into the human soul. So instead of rising up, it's getting deeper into our own hearts. You know how people often think they climb mountains and seek God up high, but we tend to forget that God is in the human heart. So the hard work is not just doing the, the climbing mountains and, and doing the higher things, but really listening to that spirit that is within us. And so if you think about the, the wilderness journey for Jesus, it was always about that inward part of trusting God. So let's listen to the story today from Matthew 21. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. Jesus had already arranged for that because he was wanting to make sure this was a sign that people would not miss because this was a reference to Zechariah, to an ancient prophecy. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet saying, tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey and on a colt and a, a, the foal of a donkey. Now, this is an interesting detail here uh, when you think about a, a, a foal. Now, can you be carrying heavy things when you're riding on a colt? I mean, donkeys carry a lot. I, I grew up in the Middle East, so I know I've seen them carrying a lot of things. They still use them and a lot of uh, agriculture, uh, and they carry heavy loads. But when you talk about a colt, this was interesting because it, it's making sure that this person who's riding on the donkey and the colt, they were not going to be carrying this military heavy equipment. So they're coming in peace. The disciples went and did as Jesus had, had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road. So again, this was spontaneous. There was no red carpet laid out. There was just people's acts of generosity and love. And others cut branches from the trees. Again, 
and act that they're just spontaneous here and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that, that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. And this is where the twist comes in. So they're, they're thinking still of him as this military leader. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds are saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Because they were wondering, Who is this? Can we trust him to lead us out of the oppression of the empire? And so today I want you to imagine what that looks like for you. Because the Bible stories are only powerful when, when we allow the Holy Spirit to let them speak to us. The Holy Spirit usually uses these Bible stories to speak to us about our world today, about our own experiences. So I want you to uh, imagine in your uh, mind's eye what that will be for you, what you might experience as you're asking this question. Where, are my, where am I headed? Where is my life headed? And you might be closer to the end. Maybe you're beginning your life. Wherever you are on the spectrum, it is important for us to ask this question and to really look at how we trust Christ to lead us in all the transitions and all the challenges. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to enter into the story through our imagination. And so we're going to ask the Holy Spirit to guide us. And so I'll guide you in this, and I invite you to listen. And your mind may wander, but that's okay. Whatever works for you, take a deep breath and come back. If your mind wanders, um, come back to this moment. And, but the invitation is to really allow that encounter with Christ for you to be what it needs to be. You're not trying to make it something that it's not. Let, let the Holy Spirit speak to you wherever you need guidance, you need uh, grace, you need compassion, you need challenge. And so let's uh, take a few deep breaths. Center yourself. And you may want to close your eyes. And as you do that, as you are setting your intention to be listening, to be encountering of the power of God in your heart, use these words as your prayer. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, ready to walk with you today. Now imagine it is a beautiful spring day. The sun is shining, the air is warm. A sense of new life surrounds you. You are walking along a narrow path in a large city that you visited many times before. You love this place. The small narrow streets crowded with people, the marketplace with the smells, and noises as you walk you see a crowd forming along the street in front of you it looks like they are lining the streets for some reason you wonder what's going on so you walk towards that street when you get closer you can hear people chanting, but you can't make out the words. They seem to be waving something up and down. As you get closer, you see many people smiling and waving large branches. Some of the people had put their cloaks on the ground. So you think, there must be some royalty or wealthy, important person coming. As you look down the street, and a few feet away, 
you see a man sitting on a donkey. He's waving to the crowd, but his face is serious. So you get to the front of the crowd so you can see him more closely. When he gets close to you, he stops and looks at you, and you recognize him. It is Jesus. He is the one everyone has been talking about. So take a few moments to tell him about your burdens. And now let Jesus speak to you. Whatever words of affirmation, comfort, compassion, whatever you need, let him speak those words to you. As he's looking at you and speaking to you, you hear also the crowd getting louder. They're yelling out, praising him, saying, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. So Jesus reaches down for your hand and you reach up and you hold his hand. After a few moments, you start walking with Jesus down the road. You have no idea where you are going, but it doesn't matter at all. You trust him. When you are ready, you can come back to this place with gratitude in your heart, but also with a prayer to be able to see the burdens of your life in light of Christ's eternal love. Let Jesus help you to carry these burdens this week. And you listen to his words that he spoke to us. Come to me. All you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Amen. In the spirit of Christ, we come to receive these gifts, and we remember that the story didn't end with Palm Sunday, with the entry into Jerusalem, but the story continued, and it continued with a symbolism of love. Uh, Jesus gathered his disciples, and this was an intentional act. He prepared the meal, he prepared the space, and he wanted to make sure that the people would experience once more something that he would leave behind for them. And so, we come in the same tradition, and we're so grateful that Christ had the vision to bring us to this table, to bring us to this gift of coming to receive his affirmation and his love. 
and that to remind us that this table is a place like no other, an experience like no other, not because the elements are special or the space is special, but the one who is the host is the one that is special. And inviting each one of you today, wherever you are, whatever parcels you're carrying with you, uh, to come and to let them go and to trust, to receive the grace that you need. And so we take a moment to pray and to bring all of our hearts before God for this moment of grace. God, we give you thanks for this feast of your love, for this reminder of the ancient stories being here for us through your spirit. We ask for your blessings on us and on these elements so that your spirit may stir our hearts to pause today, to remember that wherever we are on the journey of life, you are holding us in your love. We are not alone and that we can trust your presence, we can trust your guidance, no matter how challenging life may seem. We know that you are in our midst, and we can trust and rely on your grace. For we pray this in the name of, and way of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so, friends, we remember the acts of Jesus and remember that on the night of his arrest, our Lord Jesus Christ took the bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, and after giving thanks to God, he gave it to them, saying, This cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink from it, do this in remembrance of me. And so whenever we come to this table, whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we invite the power of the Holy Spirit to transform us, to send us into the world, to live by God's vision. And we proclaim the saving life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ until he comes again. So friends, we invite you to come forward as you are able and to receive these gifts of bread and cup. And if you uh, would like to be served where you are, I'm, I see Pam is ready, and I'm assuming Pam and Grace will be the team to bring the elements to you. And so as you come, you may take a piece of bread and dip it in the cup or uh, take a piece of bread and a small cup and receive the gifts as you uh, feel moved to, and there is a gluten-free option. Come, for all is ready.
and we give thanks. We give you thanks, O God, for the feast of your love and the invitation to come to you and to trust you with our burdens and to open our hearts and lives to this moment of grace. We pray as we go into the world to remember the wisdom of this table, the wisdom of trusting and holding your hand along the way. Amen. So we join in the affirmation of faith. We believe in a God who walks headfirst into the world's suffering. Who pulls back the curtain so we can see the stars. Who is bold in seeking justice. We believe in a God who sees our hurt and wraps love around it. Tethering us to one another. Into the, ho into the hope of a new day. That is where we follow. And please join me, stand and as you are able and join me in singing hymn number 91, Right On, Right On in Majesty. For the blessing, as you leave this place, may God bless you with seeking. Seek out the hungry, seek the weary. Seek the good in every person you pass. Seek out the hopeful, seek the faithful. Seek God in each of us. As you seek and as you wonder, may you find what you are looking for. In the name of our loving God who is always seeking us, go now in peace. Amen. I'm going to invite you to uh, enjoy the... Uh, duet that is happening. Do uh, you want to tell us anything about it? The palms? So please be seated. Yeah, you want to say anything about it? Um, so in my organ lessons, my teacher Georgia gave me this a few weeks ago. It's a piano and organ duet. It's called The Palms. And I asked Elaine if she would like to play it with me. She said yes. And we practiced it Thursday and we had a really great time playing it together. So we hope you enjoy. Thank you.
poor Melzi. I always put you on the spot, but I thought there's got to be a reason why they're doing it. Amen. Wow. Talk about praising God with music. And so I invite you at this time to turn to your neighbors and uh, share the peace of Christ with them. May the peace of Christ be with you throughout this whole week.